In today's show, we recap the four games from Tuesday, some big news across the NBA, look at some waiver wire stuff, and we talk to Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So, there were four games on Tuesday. We're going to talk about those games. There was a bunch of news that we need to get to as well. A lot of that stuff you would have heard about or seen, but we'll cover it off here anyway. And as you can see, Beard has gone because I'm growing a mustache for Movember. To raise funds, and I raise the funds through guys like you watching and listening to this, donating. Um, Raise funds for men's mental health awareness and support, suicide prevention, prostate cancer treatment and research, and testicular cancer research and treatment. There will be a link in the description of this video as well as the show notes. You can go to movember.org.au and search up my name and find me there. Uh, pretty easy to do if you want to. So thanks to everyone who's done that so far. We had a $500 goal. I hope might, might raise that to 1000 because we've got a bit of that in already. And you're going to see this mustache start to creep out, creep out over the course of this month. That is why the beard has gone. Let's look at some news. Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right. We know this. Steve Nash has been fired. It looks like they're going to bring Ima Udoka in. Sean Marks is like, oh, Ima Udoka? I've never heard of her. I, no, I don't know. No, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, but Woj is telling us, sorry, Ima Udoka's personal PR rep, uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, is telling us that Udoka is going to get the job there in Brooklyn. The Nets, man, they're just... Is, have, you, have I ever wanted a team to lose more than the Nets? Probably not. Everything they do is just irritating. I'm so glad they got beaten today. Um, the Nash situation was stupid. The Kyrie situation remains stupid. Hiring Udoka when you've already got a PR problem remains stupid. Kevin Durant situation, stupid. All of it. It's so dumb. And I don't know why they keep putting their foot in every move they make. I just want them to lose every game. It's, it's great to have a villain. It's great to have a villain that loses as well. And that's exactly where we are with them. They're also allegedly investigating a suspension for Kyrie Irving for his posts of anti-Semitic media. I don't know whether they will or not, but who knows? The NBA PA is putting out strongly worded statements and the NBA is condemning hate speech and the Nets are saying, oh yeah, maybe we'll let's just let everyone calm down before we let Kyrie talk to the media again. Look, just stupid stuff all over the place. I don't think there's going to be a suspension for Kyrie, but honestly with this bloke, who can tell what's going to happen day to day? There's always something. Like on your bingo card, did you think Kyrie promotes anti-Semitism? Would, oh, sorry, can't use the word promotes because that's not what he believes he did. Um, would you have that on your bingo card? Like who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with this guy? There's always something with this team, with this guy, and uh, it's it's bloody tiring, to be honest. Just ridiculous. Um, Darren Fox has a bone bruise. The team is saying that it's fine. It's nothing to be concerned about. He shouldn't be out long. Tell that to Kendrick Nunn, who missed all of last season with a bone bruise. Tell that to Lonzo Ball, whose knee injury started out, I believe, as a bone bruise. Um, these things can take months. They can also take weeks or days. There is really no way of, of knowing exactly how long this is going to be. But that's why I grabbed Davion Mitchell wherever I could. I don't know that Pokyshev, Pokyshevsky, Jesus Christ, I had something else in my brain. I don't know that Davion Mitchell is going to have any more value past Wednesday. But I know this injury can linger. So I grabbed him. And let's just see where it goes. And if he is available in your league, I would suggest doing it too. Chris Middleton is back. Sort of. He's back practicing in the G League. I would expect there'd be a return from him coming maybe next week now, which is great news. Gary Payton's out for two more weeks in Portland. I don't think he's going to be a 12 or 10 team league guy, maybe a 14 team league guy, but he'd be one of those names that seems to appear pretty consistently as a stream option. Um, He would have been helpful to have with Lillard out, but I think Lillard's probably going to return faster than Payton. 
And then Peyton's going to be battling for guys with guys like Shaden Sharp for bench minutes. So yeah, I don't really know how much is going to happen there. Dennis Schroeder is expected back in 10 days for the Lakers. There could be a decent role. I wouldn't stash him though, but there could be a decent role while Bob Covington is out again tomorrow. And Steve Adams and Desmond Bain have appeared uh, as well as Jake LaRavia have appeared as questionable on the injury report for the Grizzlies. Brandon Clark is not on the injury report at all. So I wonder if Adams does miss with that jaw problem, if they do start Clark or if they go with the cashier, Xavier T. Illman. We'll see which direction they decide to go. But that is <clears throat> that is your updates on news across the NBA. Let's look at some waiver wire stuff that's happened over the last 24 hours. The most added player is Davion Mitchell. He's up 34%. I highly endorse this. Jock Landale is up 34%. Some of that is because he plays today and because he played really well last game. Aiton is probably, you know, well, he's going to be a week, but he might be back on the weekend. So it's only a short-term scenario, but it's not a bad thing. Alex Caruso, the rabbit hunter, he's up 30%. Keep we quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. It didn't really work out today, but Levine is going to be out tomorrow. Desumu played, but Kobe White was out. So there are going to be bigger minutes for Crusoe. So it's not a bad ad to get the Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. Baisley up 24%. That was just streaming today. Didn't really do much. Um, Javante Green up 18%. I'm guessing that's for today as well. Kevin Herter up 16 His value does go up, I think, without De'Aaron Fox. Well, Caleb Martin up 14%. Did nothing. But the value of him on a low-volume day is there. And Contavious Caldwell-Pope up 12%. He's also playing really well. Surprisingly well. Probably is a, sh- a fringe 12-team league player. I'm not really sure it's going to stick there. The most dropped players on waiver wires. Malik Monk down 18%. He's just lost all his minutes. Now, the absence of Fox probably gives him a little bit of a buffer, but there's no reason to really hold him in most 12-team formats. Will Barton? Down 16%. No reason to hold him. Big Dick, Nick Richards, down 16%. As you know, I've gone on about, I didn't think that Clifford was going to make a change at center. And I think you might just be holding on to a 19-minute-a-night guy in vain for three months. You might not be. He might make the change. I don't really see it coming, though. So I, I get that. Brandon Clark down 14%. He's doing nothing. Maybe there's an opportunity if Adams misses tomorrow, but that's about it. Jalen Duran, he is out tomorrow. When we did the What to Watch For show, we weren't sure on that, but he is out. He's dropped. I get it. That's totally fine. Tari preseason down 12%. That's a drop. Andre Drummond down 12%. Yep, clearly a drop. He's out. He's not even playing. And John Ray Hunter down 10%. Yep, should not be rostered in 12-team formats. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your football and now basketball NBA betting this season. Find all the latest player developments, the team matchups, the news, the podcasts, and the in-depth analysis over at betonline.net. It remains your continued source for all sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. Maybe disc golf? I'm not sure. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, the NHL, MMA, boxing, and golf. So go and have a look at the website, which I'm going to do now. The Panthers and my man PJ Walker are seven-point underdogs in their game against the Bengals this weekend. Which side are you on? Bet, Bet Online's got the odds. you just got to pick which one you like. So head over there to the website and you will use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online is where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly. After listening to Locked On Fantasy Basketball, check out Locked On Sports Today. Make it your second listen. All of the news, including the Steve Nash firing, is over at Locked On Sports Today. Short little show recapping all of the biggest news across the sports landscape every day. First game, it is those aforementioned, the aforementioned Brooklyn Nets. They lost, lol, against the Chicago Bulls with a big comeback. 108-99 was the final score. Um, Zach Levine went crazy. He had 20 points in the fourth quarter because it was a rough night for Levine before that. But he ended with 29 points, four rebounds, five assists, five threes. He looked comfortable. He took a lot of shots. Um, he was efficient. He was he won them the game, really, and now he's going to sit tomorrow. Ayo Desumu, 33 minutes. Most encouraging, almost 19% usage. 17 points, four assists, three steals, defended really well, shot really well. He's really taken his game to a new level. I didn't really expect him to do this, obviously. I got it wrong on him, pretty obviously. Maybe he falls away, but I don't think so. At least until Lonzo Ball returns, but who knows when the hell that's going to happen, if it happens at all. Pat Williams, two games without Andre Drummond. 
Two games over 30 minutes. 12 and 7 for Pat Williams, a steal and two blocks. That line is a 12 team line. Is he a 12 team player? I have my doubts about that, but I would scoop him in a 14 team league. DeRozan was pretty inefficient, 20 points on 21 shots. He had two steals and a block. He's the 37th ranked player this season. That's sort of about the area he was being drafted. We all did expect a drop-off from DeRozan where, from where he was last season, and he's sort of falling into that spot. Well, um, the big fella, Nick Vucevic... Is Vucevic. He's also sort of hovering around the area he was drafted, 44th ranked player. Another... Shocking field goal percentage night. Seven points on 38%, but he grabbed 15 rebounds. He was one of two from the line. He's had a really weird season. Goran Dragic had 15 points in 20 minutes, while Caruso, rough, yeah, just rough, man. 24 minutes, four points. He had four assists. Didn't get a steal, though. I am 100% sure I saw him get a steal. They just didn't credit that. I and mean, shot 25%. He is only a streamer for steals and you know, on those games that Levine sits. But it's not great that Levine's sitting Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Because it's an 11-game 11 day, 11 day in the NBA, and you might not even use Caruso. Yep, not a must-hold player at all. On the Nets, um, Corey Irving was stinking. 33 minutes, 4 points, and those 4 points all came in the 4th quarter. 7 assists and 6 rebounds is nice. 17% shooting is not. But even with this game, he falls to the 13th-ranked player. Like, as I said earlier, I don't know what's going to happen with this bloke. Um, there's always going to be some sort of stupid shit, but generally when he's on the court... He produces well, but, but who knows, man? Durant, 32, 9, and 6, one steal, two blocks, 53% shooting, perfect 12 of 12 from the line. He is, he has actually, as of today, leapt over Shea Gildas-Alexander to be the number one player in fantasy this season. Just huge numbers. He's fourth in, in points leagues. Again, huge numbers. But the mess that's going on in Brooklyn, he is absolutely not absolved. He is a huge part of this mess. He co-signs this stuff. He wanted Nash fired. Now Nash is fired. Then he comes out and says, oh, no, I didn't I didn't know anything about that. Like, All right, KD, no worries, mate. And it was a big game from the Baz Marty man, Royce O'Neal. 20 points in 34 minutes. He hit four threes. 67% shooting. He was a minus 11, of course. He is a top 100 player. You're, you're fine to have him. I Look, there's a lot of stuff that he does like these shooting nights where it just isn't going to stick. And there was Curry and Simmons out of this game that are going to impact him. You know what? Anabe was great. 28 minutes, 10 points, two threes, two blocks. I thought he played really well. He's never going to get this level of playing time every night, but he was impressive. While Claxton had 10 and 10 with a block, 100% from the field, 50 from the line. That's pretty standard, but it's 35 minutes because Simmons didn't play. We really need to see what they do next game when Simmons returns. And then there's Curry that's got to come back. Um, Joey Harris, Struggled, yeah. Eight points, two threes, 21 minutes. Absolutely no reason for Joe Harris to be on a 12-team roster outside of you know an, an emergency desperation stream today. Get that garbage out of here! Yep, no reason at all. Let's, uh, let's go to the next one. It is the Golden State Warriors and the Miami Heat. The Warriors lose another three in a row on this road trip. The Heat, 116-109 for the Warriors. Steph was pretty, well, actually really good. 23, 13, and 13 on 50% shooting. 27 usage. It's pretty weird to see yeah, his usage down below Clay Thompson, who volume-wise had his best game. 19 points, 31 minutes, but 37%. Three rebounds, two assists. Look, this game brings Clay Thompson to the 219th ranked player this season. He's really struggling. I do think he's a hold, but for the Warriors to go well, they need him to be better, but they don't need him to be the number one offensive option. And that's what he was. Huh. Andy Wiggins, good bounce back. 21, 4, and 5 with two blocks, 67% shooting. He's solid. I don't think he's going to maintain top 50 value, which is where he is at the moment. While Jordan Poole, oh, he stunk. He was really bad. Nine points, 30 minutes. He did get the 30 minutes, though, but only two assists, 30% shooting. He's really struggling as well. He's barely a top 100 player this season. And we had those concerns, and they're bearing out even more extreme than we thought. For the love of God, I'm not even going to suggest streaming this bloke anymore. Blunty. Five points and zero rebounds in nine minutes. He had a block, cool. He had 3,000 about the first three minutes, and, and Kerr did say, so, uh, yeah, Kerr. I don't know why I got confused there. Kerr did say, so, oh, I thought he did well in the second half. He's not good. He's really actually not good. He might become good. I don't know. I have my doubts. At the moment, he is 100% categorically bad. And in a week's time, that might be different. As of right now, he is bad, as is Mr. DMP John Kaminga. He's bad as well. The Warriors bench is bad. 
Moses Moody also struggled in this game. Six points with two threes in 15 minutes, while Jermichael Green had nine and nine in 18 minutes. Draymond was all right, five and six with three steals, and that's just all right. Really helped by the steals, which had been down to start this season. He is the 74th ranked player, despite the absolute lack of scoring, but that's what Draymond Green does. For the Heat, Bam at a bio, pretty strong game there from Bam. Bam, 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 Bam. Um, yeah. 19 and 7, 6 assists, 3 steals, and a block. That's a really good BAM game. He's back to 34th for the season. Strong. Butler, 23, 6, and 8. Strong. And Kyle Lowry, remember the Kyle Lowry panic? 13, 5, and 9 is not a great game. He's the 72nd ranked player. Like you drafted him at like 90 or 100. Yeah, it's fine. He's just doing what he does. The 9 assists are super valuable. We lost Tyler Hero during this game to an eye injury. But it doesn't appear like it's going to be a long-term thing. He might actually play tomorrow. With him out, Max Mux, not Max, Max Struess, the Winter Soldier, started the second half. 33 minutes, 24 points, 4-3. Struess has been very up and down. He's the 125th ranked player this season, but with Oladipo out, Hero in doubt, there are minutes here and opportunities for him. He's just really, though, a points and threes guy. Well, Dunk Robinson stepped up for 17 points and 5 threes, while Caleb Martin, just the 19 minutes. Yeah. So it's good. He's a good streamer. He's a fine backing guy. Under no circumstance do I believe Caleb Martin is a must roster player. He is a back end player, and when you look at your roster, if he if he's your worst player, then he's droppable. Anyone who is your worst player within reason is droppable. And Caleb Martin is almost definitely going to be that in a lot of cases. He's going to be up and down. He's going to have much better nights than this. He's going to have worse nights than this. But the disturbing part is the only 19 minutes as Duncan Robinson gets that extra playing time, and so did Gabe Vincent who played 31 minutes, 4-8 and eight with two steals. Vincent is just a deep league guy, but he is still a really reliable um, rotation piece. Let's go to the next one. Oh, the Magic and the Thunder. The Magic are always just winning, and then they shit themselves in the fourth quarter, and they lose. The Thunder, is this, what, four out of the last five or four straight wins for them? 116-108, the final score. Wendell Carter Jr., 35 minutes, 30 points, 12 rebounds, two steals, two threes, a block. 66th ranked player. I have had multiple people say they, they've dropped Wendell Carter or are going to drop him. And I, for the love of God, cannot understand why. He's actually really good. And I'll tell you who else is really good at the moment, which is stunning. In fact, I know I use this for Luka Doncic, but I'm going to use it in the different form of the word. Oh, stunning. Yeah, yeah it is stunning. What the fuck is going on? Why is Bold Bold good now? 31 minutes, 13 and 12 with four blocks. Sure, he had one assist and six turnovers, but the 31 minutes are there. And while we worry that when the guards come back, he'll lose minutes, one guard came back and another one went straight back out. Jalen Suggs returned, Terrence Ross went out. Cole Anthony looks like he's going to be a while. I don't know when the hell Gary Harris is returning and there's no update on Markel Fultz. So Ross out with knee soreness. Don't know when that's, how long that's going to last. And Suggs is back. So Bowl is probably going to keep starting. Just honestly, an amazing trajectory to see him go into this. I don't think he plays 30 minutes a night as we move forward. But everyone's out, so he's going to keep doing it. Wagner had 20 points with seven assists. Great to see him with a big game. And two blocks. And then Paulo Banquero. Second game in a row, under 20 points, 15 and eight. At least he hit his free throws, but he's dropping back down. 86th ranked player. So many rookies started out on fire. And I think Polo might be the only one left. Maybe him and Keegan are the only top 100 players left. Jalen Suggs played off the bench. Wasn't moving great and shot poorly. Nine points on 21% is sh shocking. It's shithouse. But four assists, two steals, a block and a three. I would add him in 12 team leagues. As I said, Terrence Ross lasted only four minutes. Caleb Houston actually started for us, but I think it'll be Suggs that starts their next game. While Roderick Hampton had 10 points. I believe that Hampton had his um, rookie option declined, so he'll go straight into unrestricted free agency. And a couple of Jazz guys as well, Balmaro and Azabuke, had their rookie options declined. Jumro KK hit a couple of threes, 13 minutes for six points, but he's fallen way behind where Bol is in the rotation, and he's just not going to have any real value. He's not even a top 250 player this season. Shea Gildas Alexander is definitely a top 250 player. In fact, he is... Oh, he's actually, he as, earlier, Durant was number one. This game finished and finalized. Shea moved back to number one. So there you go. Shea back at your number one player. 34, 4, and 6, 3 steals and 2 blocks. Can Shea keep doing this? Or maybe. 67% shooting won't stick. The free throws are great. The defensive stats are great. There's going to be some come down. That's what she said. And then 
you, what, what do you do with the fake tanking narrative? Shay's going to stop playing after Christmas. He's not going to play in February. I, 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 I don't believe that because you know what? It didn't happen last year. So I don't know what to make of it. Can Shay get hurt? Is Shay injury prone? M- maybe. Those two things are both possible. Will they sit a healthy Shea Gildas Alexander? Absolutely no chance. They just won't do it. He's dominating. He's got all NBA in his sights and he's killing it. I think at very worst, he's a top 20 player. <sighs> Should we do it? Should we reassign a drop? No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Pokyshevsky. 31 minutes off the bench, 16 and 9, two steals and three blocks. That's sexy. It's brilliant. It's unbelievable. It's stunning, in fact. But like, he might play 12 minutes next game. The recent trend has been moving up. And in a 14-team league, I would take the punt. In a 12, I- I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm ready for it because they mix and match their front court every game. Like They bench Josh Giddy for the second half here. Robinson Earl and Wiggins and Baisley, although Baisley hasn't started a game. Guys are all over the shop on this team. And Poku's one of those guys. But this was great. Robinson Earl had 11 and 5 with three steals and a block in 22 minutes. That's a really good line. He's a nice 16 to 14 team league player. Giddy in his first game back only had seven points on 25%, which is bad. But 23 usage is great. 10 assists is great. A steal and a block is great. Don't panic. Trey Mann with a good game, 13, 5, and 3 with two triples. I still think he's more of a 14 team league player, not a 12. And let's talk about the one that people are going to want to. Actually, no, we won't do that yet. Let's talk about Ludot. No, my son is also named Bort. 14 points on 31%. He's not good enough to take this many shots. He is not a 12-team league category player. He's fine as a 12-team points guy, but even then it's borderline. I'd still hold him in points, but categories I wouldn't. Baisley had four points in 18 minutes, while Wiggins went from like 25 minutes down to 13 because you can't predict the front court. So let's talk about the Bronco. Broncos country, let's ride. Jalen Williams. I was super hyped. I'm hyped that they started him. I think he should be added everywhere. And then people look at this and go, ooh, Six points, 22 minutes, two steals. He didn't play well, and there is no debating that whatsoever. All right? none, whatso- none whatsoever. But he had one game where he left early. He had one game where he returned. He had this game, and he's still a top 130 player on a per-game basis. It's only three games, but there's been one good game in there. Right? But it's not about, oh, well, he was shit today, so see you later. I've got to drop him. All right? I don't know if he continues to start. I honestly don't know. If I added someone with the long-term potential, not to stream only for today, but with the long-term potential, which is what I'm doing with Jalen Williams, I'm definitely giving it more than one day. It was a poor game. Let's see what happens if it's a week as he adjusts to a new position and playing next to new teammates in a new situation. Uh, Let's see what happens over the next couple of games. If I added Jalen Williams, I am holding him. If someone drops Jalen Williams, I will add him. And then in a week's time, I might be dead wrong on this. But that's not really the point, is it? Because it's about ability, which he has, statistical profile, which he has, and opportunity, which he also currently has. And I don't know whether it sticks, but I'm sure as shit's sticking with it to see what happens over the next week. If you want to be reactionary and drop him, I can't control your team. Do whatever you want. But I know that if I had been able to grab him, which unfortunately I wasn't, if I had been able to grab him, there's no way that I would drop him after this. Absolutely no situation in 10 or 12 or 14. Someone tweeted at me today said, oh, I would drop him in an 18 team. Like, I'm sorry, mate, but that's insane. Like, what are we doing here? No no chance that I would do that. So, make like, hey, if you are here on YouTube, can you drop something down in the comments below? What are you doing with Jalen Williams? Are you holding him? Because oh, I sure as shit am. There's, I have no doubt about that. Even though this wasn't a good game, that is not what it's about. I will absolutely hold him. And we'll see what happens from there. All right, let's do the last game of the night. The Minnesota Timberwolves go down again. This time to the Phoenix Suns, 116-107. Carl Anthony Towns was pretty good. 24-10-7. The assists are up, good rebounds. Still not anywhere near a first-round player, but he's pushing back into at least second-round contention. What about Goose? Anthony Edwards. He had a nice little hot run where he hit like two threes in a row on a 10-0 run in the third quarter, I think it was. 24 and 6 is strong. Five threes is good. Three steals is good. But he can't shoot. 60% from the line. Is he one? Of, is he the next one of these guys that just forgets how to shoot free throws? I hope not. And 38% from the field. That's really, really hurting his overall value. And Rudy Gobert struggled. Seven points, nine rebounds, a block. 
He had took one shot. He missed it. He was somehow a perfect seven of seven from the line. Just really poor. Not as poor as D'Angelo Russell, though, who played 23 minutes. Five, four, and four, 25%. Wasn't really due to foul trouble. He only ended up with three fouls. He just struggled, and he struggled the last three or four games. He was on a really hot start to begin the year. He's fallen off. He's somewhere in between that. And Jaden McDaniels, he's not quite as inconsistent as Karis LeVert, but he's all over the place. 17 minutes for McDaniels. He did have five fouls. That's what limited him. Four and three, no blocks, one steal. He'd been really getting by on a big defensive stat diet. Some games he has big shooting numbers. Some games he has no scoring. It's almost a guarantee he has no assists and very low rebounds. So it's really, you're living and dying by the um, variance of defensive stats. And it's been good, but there'll be nights like this when it's dreadful. And it was. Naz Reed had a nice 13-3 and three in 16 minutes. That's solid enough for deeper leagues, but nothing exciting. Well, Noel played 22 minutes for 10 points and 4 assists. Much better than his last game performance, but he's looking more like a 14-16 to 16 team league guy. Kyle Anderson played through the back issue, um, 3 points in 14 minutes. A lot of panic on Cam Johnson early on. He had 29 points, 7 threes, 3 steals, a block, 59% shooting. Yep, <clears throat> that's why we held on to him. The role was there. The minutes were there. They pushed up, and the shots were going to fall. Now, he's not going to be this good, pretty obviously. And he's probably not going to be 24 usage, but this was great, and he was great. Macau Bridges, only 14.6 usage. 19 points, 70% shooting, four assists, a triple one. He's been really, really good. I think he's one of the best players in the NBA that nobody talks about. I think what he's doing from a fantasy perspective at the moment is probably going to fall away a little bit. The shooting, which has been great for three years, it's probably not. It's still not this good. So I think we're going to see a little bit of a drop, but he's been awesome. And the center position, it went to Biombo. 30 minutes versus Landale's 16. 18, 7... Oh, sorry, sorry, no, not 18. 8 points for Biombo with 4 blocks. I think that's 9 blocks in the last 2 games. So if you need blocks, he's fine. Landale, we had 16 points last game, and we had 4 and 1 in 16 minutes. Really disheartening after last game, and the fact that he's been the backup center every single game to then see a guy come from third string and play 30 minutes over the top of you. It's frustrating. It's frustrating, I'm sure, for him. It's frustrating for fantasy analysts trying to get the pattern of what the hell is going on with this team or the rotations. And sometimes there's no real rhyme nor reason because it's not like Biombo and Aiton are analogs. They're not the same player. It's not like replacing like for like. But it's frustrating. All right, anyway, we can uh, go ahead and jack jock off. Wasn't Devin Booker's best, but 18, 7, and 5 still gets it done. And Chris Paul, yep, that's really good. 15, 8, and 12 with three steals. He started to take more shots. He's still not being super efficient. And we don't think we're going to get top 20 Chris Paul. But we're going to get better than what he is, which is like the 50th best player, 55th best player. Haven't seen all the rankings update after this game. But he's starting to get back into rhythm. Not much more to really look at there. Landry Shamit continues to be just not really an NBA rotation player. But <clears throat> they don't have many other options. That's why he plays. But I think that that extension they gave him was obviously pretty um, pretty poor. Um, yeah, but whatever. It is, whatever They're rolling. They're putting up big numbers, and things are going well. That's all the lines of the night. Your monstrous goes to Kevin Durant in Brooklyn, who is up to the number two ranked player this season. Your waiver wire line of the night is Alexei Pokishevsky, who's put together 20-plus minutes in three straight games and was great against the Magic. Now, it was against the Magic, but... Who knows? Like, it's going to be a roller coaster. Add him if you want. Like, try it out. They've got a great schedule this week as well, which helps. Young gun of the night is Franz Wagner. And your dart of the night is Jordan Poole, who was stinky. He really struggled. And he's had quite a poor season by his standards from last year anyway. Your top 10 players in category leagues. Number one was Kevin Durant, followed by Steph Curry, Wendell Carter Jr., Shea Gildas Alexander, Cameron Johnson, Carl Anthony Towns, Bol Bol, Bam Adebayo, Alexei Pokyshevsky, and Jimmy Butler. Top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Poku at number one. Robinson Earl at number two. You leave him for like 14 teamers. Dunk Robinson. No, Patrick Williams is a 14 team ad. Yuta Watanabe, just deeper leagues. Goran Dragic, very deep leagues. Jermichael Green, very deep leagues. Nazareth Reed, very deep leagues. Chima, Chuma OKK, don't care about that one. And Usman Jiang. Also, not really that interesting for most fantasy leagues. In your top 10 players in points leagues today, Shea at one, followed by Steph, Durant, Wendell Carter, Chris Paul, Cam Johnson, Bam Adebayo, Carl Anthony Towns, Jim Butler, and Goose, Anthony Edwards. And that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, 
Odyssey. And on YouTube, thumb it up. Leave your comments. Subscribe. Comments, 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 comments. Subscribes and thumbs up. That's all really good. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.